we're having today uh, for the Mises Institute Oral History Project, uh, we're interviewing the distinguished historian of classical liberalism, Ralph Rako, who was the uh, closest associate of Murray Rothbard. And uh, we're, we're going to ask him a number of questions about his early life and career. And Ralph, I'd like to start off uh, by asking, uh, I believe you were born in the Bronx. Uh, can you tell us something about what it was like growing up there? Well, no, no I wasn't. I wasn't born in the Bronx. I was born in, uh, uh, in uh, what was then Italian Harlem, uh, now Spanish Harlem. And uh, David, you must know this. Um, the um, uh, Archbishop uh, Usher in the 17th century. Oh yes. Uh, right. He dated the uh, creation of the world uh, from October 23rd, 4004 BC. Well, I don't know about the 4004 BC, but that October 23rd I think is very auspicious. I was born on October 23rd, 1936, uh, on uh, 107th Street uh, in uh, Italian Harlem. Uh, but uh, very soon, uh, uh, my parents uh, made a couple of real good decisions. My Italian relatives were fine people, uh, 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 basically working people. They were, some of them owned small shops, but very warm-hearted people. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, when I was very young, we moved up to the Bronx, and that was a whole different world. Uh, the first uh, a good thing my my parents did was put me in the public schools, not parochial schools. Uh, I don't think I would have been very happy with uh, those uh, being with those uh, tough uh, Irish kids who uh, knew how to use their fists and so on. It was much better to, uh, being in the public schools where everybody was Jewish. Uh, <laughs> well, not not some of the, not some of the, the old uh, uh, tenured uh, teachers who were uh, uh, Irish or uh, or German, but um, all, all my friends were, were uh, Jewish, and uh, uh, where we lived in the in the uh, uh, Bronx also, in my apartment building, uh, there was only one other non-Jewish family. That was uh, the Greeks, the Athos family next door. Very nice people. But everybody else was uh, was uh, uh, Jewish. Um, down on the uh, on the fourth floor, uh, uh, this is a, a bit of an uh, interesting anecdote. Uh, the, most of them were just uh, FDR lovers, uh, but there were some Norman Thomas socialists. And on the fourth floor, uh, in 4B, Mrs. Sherovitz, um, who was a communist, uh, her husband belonged to the Furriers Union. And uh, very early on, in, in my early teens, I, I started to uh, get, uh, as I'll explain, uh, polit certain political views. And um, um, I, I, I also wanted to spread my views. So I sent a letter to, uh, I think it was the Daily News, where I said that uh, Joseph Stalin had been a uh, bank robber. Well, yeah, every, everybody knows that. He was uh, uh, collecting funds for, the, uh, for his for the Bolsheviks in the Caucasus in Georgia, but uh, Mrs. Sher so my mother showed this around, uh, this letter to the editor, uh, uh, wonderful and so on. But Mrs. Shervitz got very angry, and she said, "You know, Stalin could sue you for that." <laughs> and I and I panicked. My f if Stalin sues me, my father's going to kill me. <laughs> How am I going to get an attorney? You know this. This well, it turned out Stalin didn't sue me, but um, uh, this is uh, uh, an indication. As I say, most of them were just uh, Roosevelt lovers, but they were. Um, uh, there was some, uh, uh, but uh, uh, really uh, uh, quite uh, 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 nice people. Um, and um, so, growing up uh, in the Bronx, yes. Uh, all, all of, as I say, all my friends were, were Jewish. Some of them were, were real smart. In junior high, my best friend was uh, Leon Levy. Um, and he must, or, I don't know what age he 
weren't, maybe 14 or something. Anyway, um, in his room behind his desk, he had the periodic table of the elements. Um, he was very, very much into chemistry. It turned out to be, as I learned in later years, a geologist down in uh, Texas. But um, very smart uh, uh, kids, uh, some of them were. Um, now, uh, well, let's talk about uh, um, my uh, uh, political uh, uh, influences and so on. My father used to bring home the Journal American, a, a big Hearst uh, newspaper. Um, and uh, I also, uh, uh, we also saw the D Daily News. Uh, they had this, uh, in those days, great uh, uh, isolationist uh, um, political, the, the Washington correspondent, John O'Donnell, um, and um, we've got the Daily Mirror also. Anyway, pretty much uh, uh, right wing. And on the radio, I, used to, I started to listen to Fulton Lewis, Jr., um, he had a 15-minute uh, program every uh, weekday and uh, very strongly uh, uh, anti-communist. So uh, that was uh, basically my orientation. And um, somehow, I forget how, uh, I heard about um, Hayek's uh, Road to Serfdom. So I read that, and that opened up a lot of uh, uh, doors for me. Um, and... Uh, uh, in those days, uh, uh, before uh, I was corrected, I pronounced it Hayek. Um, and um, so uh, uh, things uh, 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 went along, uh, a lot of uh, political activity. In 1952, um, I was the head of uh, uh, students for Taft in New York City. Uh, it was not a large organization. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> One thing that came of it was that uh, uh, one day at our headquarters, I forget some hotel downtown, uh, that the, the General Taft headquarters, uh, Leonard Liggio showed up, and um, that was the start of a friendship that goes on to this day. Uh, Leonard has uh, uh, been very influential in my life. And um, also I met uh, George Reisman, because George had set up a, um, um, a uh, bridge table uh, outside of the public library on 42nd Street, collecting signatures and distributing pamphlets and leaflets for Taft. So I went over to it one time, and uh, there was something about the way I came over, because the first thing that George said to me was, uh, what's on your small mind? <laughs> 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 but we became good friends, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, good friends at uh, Bronx Science. Um, uh, Leonard Ligia went on uh, uh, to uh, uh, college in uh, in uh, Georgetown, but George and I were uh, were uh, buddies for uh, quite a while. And um, uh, then um, I, uh, uh, I was uh, heavily into my letter writing uh, period, so I wrote a letter to uh, uh, just a little magazine that I think was put out by the Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, called USA. And um, uh, I mentioned, because uh, George had introduced me to Mises. George had read Human Action by that time, whenever he was 14, 15 or something. And uh, so I mentioned Mises, and uh, somehow, uh, they must have a clipping service or something, uh, they found out about this up at FEE, at the Foundation for Economic Education. Um, and uh, I got a letter from them. And they invited me, and uh, I think I mentioned George also, to come up and we were sort of poster boys at their uh, uh, annual uh, uh, board of directors uh, or board of trustees uh, meeting. Um, there were, uh, uh, so I met, uh, uh, I was pretty impressed, uh, uh, some big businessmen, there was Jasper Crane from uh, DuPont, I think. And, uh, and some others, uh, but also um, um, they. Uh, uh, oh, and I, I met the people of Betfi in those days. A very different organization, I think now. But there was Leonard Reed, uh, there was Paul Perot, Ivan Beerley, uh, F. A. Harper. F. A. Harper um, uh, was uh, uh, the first one I'd ever come across who was uh, 
um, Fred Murray's uh, point of view, which we'll, I guess I'll bring up in a, in a few minutes. Uh, let's call it the totally voluntary society. <laughs> <laughs> you get my drift. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, F.A. Harper uh, was uh, uh, universally known as Baldy Harper, not because he was bald. Uh, his brother was bald. For some reason, he was called Baldy. Uh, well, uh, one of the mysteries. <laughs> but um, uh, the the great thing that happened was that uh, 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 Leonard Reed or somebody uh, uh, suggested uh, or sent a letter to uh, uh, to Ludwig von Mises. Um, now, George and I, a couple of years before that, had um, found out where Mises lived. Did I ever tell you this? It's uh, one of the most embarrassing things that ever happened. <laughs> one of the great stories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and we, went, <laughs> we went up to Mises' apartment. He came to the door... Uh, he was uh, uh, dressed in a, uh, in a tuxedo, except for his uh, uh, his uh, bow tie. And uh, we said we asked him whether he wanted to buy a, a subscription to the Freeman, um, which uh, the fee was putting out. And uh, he said, uh, "The Freeman, uh, I already have the Freeman." And he closed the door. And George and I went out of the apartment. We didn't make any eye contact, and uh, and that was that. But this time we were invited guests uh, at the uh, Mises uh, seminar at NYU, and um, um, Mises, of course, uh, was not a tenured professor at NYU. Um, they uh, all they did was give him the room. His salary was paid was paid by the Volcker Fund. Uh, just as with Hayek, uh, never a uh, tenured uh, uh, professor in the economics department, his salary was uh, play, paid by uh, outside uh, organizations also. Um, sometimes I've uh, given, in one of in some of my talks, student groups at uh, the Mises Institute, um, ask them, uh, you know, you know your professors, uh, you know about professors. Can you imagine Hayek and, uh, and uh, Mises not being tenured, and uh, they they look a, a little stunned. Well, down at uh, the uh, uh, Mises uh, uh, seminar, met a, a lot of people, and the main one was uh, Murray Rothbard. So one question I had was, uh, it appears that although the dominant culture, when you were growing up, it, it was very left-wing, you started being interested in more classical liberal and conservative views quite early on. Uh, how do you, what do you think accounted for your reaction against the predominant views? As I say, uh, uh, the Jewish uh, the subculture, or uh, basically, basically the culture in New York and in the Bronx in those days, uh, was, uh, was quite left-wing, but not in my family. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my grandfather, uh, f uh, for one, uh, was a Republican. I think because uh, his best years was were in the uh, in the uh, business wise were, were in the twenties. But anyway, we were, there were there were no leftists uh, uh, in uh, in my in my own family. Uh, so um, uh, I didn't get that. Uh, I was sort of uh, immunized. Uh, uh, Against that, and then uh, all of these uh, other sources, the uh, uh, the uh, papers I read, and uh, uh, the radio broadcasts, and uh, uh, and so on. But um, now uh, that meeting with Murray at the Mises seminar was uh, decisive. I mean, it's most uh, Murray is the greatest uh, intellectual influence in my life. And um, we, went, we went out for coffee afterwards, and uh, I started to get an idea that uh, that Murray was a, but you really couldn't call him a, uh, uh, a, a conservative, or, or what is he exactly? Um, we, uh, we expressed our appreciation of, uh, of Mises, 
member of the non-communist left. <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes. yes. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, and, and his, his wife, Joey, uh, uh, you know, uh, he was, uh, she was uh, his absolutely perfect wife. And uh, she was so uh, generous as a hostess to us. We, uh, we spent endless uh, nights up to, uh, Joey would finally go to bed, but um, uh, up to uh, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, um, uh, Murray, uh, uh, talk, uh, talking about everything, Murray would uh, jump up and uh, get one of his books and uh, and uh, show and read us a passage from it. He read us a lot of Mencken. By the way, that's the uh, first time I'd ever cr- uh, come across uh, uh, Mencken. But uh, we did. Um, uh, oh, we went to movies uh, together. Oh, I should mention that uh, uh, wasn't just uh, uh, George and. and, and uh, me, but um, uh, Leonard uh, Liggio also very often came around. Uh, a few other people, Bob Hessen, uh, for a while. And uh, we would do other things, go to movies, uh, play board games. Uh, the favorite board game was uh, uh, Risk. It was uh, uh, taking over, you had to try to take over the world. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, um, Murray, Murray was constantly giving um, advice to other players, really disinformation, <laughs> how, to, how to attack uh, uh, someone else and so on. But um, uh, oh, uh, uh, also Ron Hamaway was uh, an important part of the group. And uh, um, so there were, uh, uh, we spent a lot of time socializing all the time. And as I say, uh, uh, Joey was a, a, a terrific uh, uh, hostess, um, typical of uh, of us, or at least me, uh, being a kid and all. Never crossed my mind to uh, bring a bottle of wine or anything, but uh, it, you know, it was water off a duck's uh, back to them. Um, but uh, this was uh, the what we call the Circle Bastiat. Um, I see that uh, on the uh, Mises Org uh, webpage, uh, Danny Sanchez has, uh, has uh, uh, a column where he talks, uh, where he uses the phrase uh, Circo Bastiat. Uh, oh, and uh, by the way, that's uh, one of the few p- pictures, one of the few photos, if anybody uh, uh, ever bothers to visit that that uh, website, that uh, uh, the uh, uh, logo is uh, one of the few photos that was ever taken of... Uh, of uh, all of us, uh, Joey took it, and if anybody wonders, um, the uh, person on the extreme right there, whose uh, face is half cut off, is uh, Leonard, because he was the tallest of us. Um, she was a great woman, not the greatest uh, photographer. <laughs> that I've ever lived. Um, let's see now. Uh, oh yeah, now. Uh, when George and I uh, uh, entered college, he was at Columbia. I was at uh, City College, and uh, we started uh, a very intensive uh, study of German, of the German language. You know that uh, uh, Hans Hoppe gets a kick out of this. You know this P.J. O'Rourke. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know uh, he's a, a neocon. He's very popular at the Cato Institute, and um, he said that uh, uh, he's written that the German is a language that's designed to enable you to spit into the face of the person you're talking to. <laughs> um, uh, Hans uh, thought that was uh, uh, funny. <laughs> uh, but we, we studied uh, a German, uh, uh, mastered it, I, I, I would say, because uh, right away, um, George got uh, a grant uh, from the Volker Fund uh, to translate uh, Mises' uh, uh, books on a uh, book on epistemological problems of economics, and also a, uh, another uh, history book that uh, Mises uh, thought was important. Um, and uh, I got a grant to translate uh, Mises' book on liberalism. And 
and uh, that uh, book has uh, come on by a number of different titles. It was uh, finally published, in, I think, in '67, um, but it's never been out of print. And uh, that um, got me into a closer relationship with uh, Mises because I talked over his uh, book, and uh, from time to time, and. Uh, also, it uh, was a feather in my cap when I uh, uh, started applying for uh, uh, positions as, uh, uh, as a college instructor. Um, but meanwhile, uh, a couple of things have, uh, happened uh, while I was in uh, grad school in Chicago. Um, we set up uh, a um, magazine called New Individualist Review, NIR, and... Um, um, Friedman was a uh, faculty advisor. We had a, c- a couple of other faculty advisors, Ben Rogge uh, from Wabash, um, Stigler. And um, we didn't need very much money, but uh, Friedman was able to uh, raise what we needed uh, among some businessmen in Chicago. It was very easy for him. And um, uh, there was a, uh, about a four or five year run of the magazine. I see that uh, Liberty Fund is brought up the copyright uh, to the uh, a magazine, but it's uh, um, now it's, it's available in hardcover and available from uh, from uh, Liberty Fund. And we got some very good articles. Um, well, the first uh, 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 article of the first issue was by Friedman, Capitalism and Freedom. It became then the name of uh, a book of his. And um, Hayek wrote for us... Uh, 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 I see that uh, uh, Armin Alshin has just uh, passed away. Alshin wrote, wrote for us stem sets, um, many other people. And um, uh, so that was uh, something that uh, I was involved with uh, very closely in, uh, uh, while in, in grad school. Another thing that happened was back in New York, and that was um, uh, the split uh, between Murray and, and Ayn Rand. I'd met Ayn uh, a few times at, uh, at her apartment, uh, uh, just uh, uh, through Murray. Uh, uh, she was uh, uh, looking to groom uh, as uh, a member of, uh, of what they called the collective. Uh, that was a kind of Randian joke. Um, it was as good a joke as the Randians ever made. <laughs> 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 But uh, and, and and Murray was uh, was uh, very uh, uh, enthusiastic about uh, Ein. Um, and Ein, Ein was uh, uh, was a, a brilliant woman. Uh, uh, certainly, the most brilliant woman I've ever met. One of the most brilliant people. Uh, however, uh, she was, I would say, um, seduced or corrupted uh, by. Uh, her later followers. In her earlier career, her friends were people like Henry Hazlitt, Leonard Reed, uh, Rose, Rose Wilder Lane, uh, people who were, in some, to some degree anyway, uh, uh, her equal. Afterwards, um, after uh, uh, Fountainhead came out, I think, um, she gathered uh, together, uh, or they gathered uh, around her, a group of uh, Canadians. Um, uh, Nathaniel Brandon, uh, his wife, Barbara Brandon, uh, Peacock, uh, the people who run the Ayn Rand Institute now, uh, that is uh, Peacock. Um, and uh, they were, they were uh, simply uh, uh, gushing acolytes. Uh, so uh, she didn't hang out with uh, her uh, former friends, uh, and she, had, she was surrounded by these people. And uh, I think that that's uh, what finally led to uh, uh, bad things in her life. For one thing, it led to uh, this uh, ridiculous affair with uh, uh, with Nathaniel Brandon, uh, who afterwards, uh, um, true to his inner self and uh, his inner tad, um, <laughs> he uh, he da- he downplayed by uh, saying that she was old enough to be his mother. So that naturally he had to break off and uh, go with a younger, uh, with a younger woman. 
Um, that's the way those people were. Um, but um, I remember one time, uh, uh, there was one time with, uh, when uh, Ein came down to the uh, uh, Mises Seminar, and that uh, was uh, really very hard for me. Uh, Mises was giving one of his lectures, and then uh, he started uh, talking about the importance of, uh, of spreading our ideas through literature. And he said, uh, and I mentioned this because uh, we have in our, our company tonight uh, a great novelist who has, uh, Atlas had come out by that time, uh, who has in fact uh, spread our ideas to uh, many, many uh, uh, thousands of people. And uh, I was sitting right next to Ida, and she was all smiled. She was glowing. She loved flattery. She was like a little girl, really. And it was very sweet to see. Um, but uh, Murray finally uh, had, had, had to break with, with Brandon. The uh, arrogance of uh, those people. Um, some of us were in... Um, in uh, with, uh, what was referred to as therapy by Brandon. He was a psychotherapist. They had a degree in, uh, in education, I think. Uh, and anyway, um, um, so I always talked uh, talk about personal things. I had the suspicion that actually Brandon was um, uh, communicating some of these personal things to, to Ayn and perhaps to others, but I, I never actually found out about that. But Brandon uh, confronted Murray one time and said that he had to divorce Joey. Why did he have to divorce Joey? Well, uh, it's obvious. She's a Christian. She believes she's a mystic. She be- well, she was a, a loving woman. She was a very intelligent woman, a very uh, a bright woman, um, and. Uh, she was the love of uh, Murray's life. He was not going to give her up for uh, this group of bozos. Um, so um, uh, that, that uh, was then that. And we all had to take our, uh, our stand, either with Murray or with uh, the Randians. And uh, uh, George Reesman and Bob Hessen went with the Randians, and uh, I and, uh, and the others in the... Circo Bastiat, uh, uh, Ron Hamaway, and uh, Leonard went with uh, with uh, uh, with the Murray. By the way, those those times when we, when um, uh, when we went up uh, to Ein's place to uh, 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 chat with her and uh, converse with her, um, I, I remember uh, one time she went into some big big thing about uh, the uh, need for having a basis in the, uh, metaphysic and uh, epistemology and so on before you can argue that the post office should be privatized. And uh, Leonard just went to sleep. That was a <laughs> uh, survival mechanism he had. Her husband, Frank O'Connor, was the best of the, of, as far as a, a human being goes, was the best of the group. Um, he, um, uh, he did some uh, some amateur painting, and um, his, uh, some of his paintings and drawings were up on, on uh, the wall in their apartment. And uh, one, of their, uh, one of the Randroids, uh, who was an uh, art history major or something, had uh, 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 verbally uh, uh, at, one, at one point uh, said that uh, uh, this particular this watercolor by uh, Frank reminds her of the young Michelangelo, and that's the kind of people they were. <laughs> well, I was looking to have, I was looking this over from that point of view, and uh, Frank was there, and I said, oh, "Frank, is is there something wrong with the perspective?" Oh, by the way, of course it was it was uh, skyscrapers. I forgot to mention that. <laughs>
I think that was the model of her uh, heroes in in, uh, her, in her in her in her novels. They're uh, real um, uh, handsome-looking uh, wasp uh, types. Uh, but um, anyway, by that time, I, uh, uh, when the split with uh, the Randians came, I, I was in Chicago. So um, I was back in Chicago. Uh, so it uh, uh, didn't really affect me. Can you say something about Hayek and your uh, relationship with him at Chicago? And Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, yeah, he was the head of my dissertation committee, so I saw him from time to time. But... Um, uh, and also, I had some tutorials with with him. That the Committee on Social Thought uh, had a uh, uh, system that they called having tutorials on particular books with uh, particular members of their of their staff. Uh, but uh, Hayek once uh, frankly to- told me the only reason he taught was uh, so that he could have an income to do his research. Uh, he had uh, very little interest in uh, in uh, teaching. Or uh, really, very little interest in uh, in students. Um, he was always uh, polite, uh, super polite, a gentleman, uh, no more street, uh, uh, aristocrat, really, and um, um, uh, of course, an immensely learned man. Uh, I have disagreements with him on on the, on the history of thought, uh, the history of thought, and other issues, but. Uh, doesn't take away uh, in the least from his greatness. Mises, on the other hand, loved students. Um, that's why he they, that's why he would go out uh, for for coffee very often afterwards with them. Um, he uh, well, I mean, in particular uh, students students who were bright and who were interested in his work. Um, and he was uh, uh, always extremely friendly, always extremely accessible. Um, so at anything that we might bring up, I remember one time um, I'd uh, uh, known Murray for a while and uh, and uh, absorbed some of his ideas, and I said, uh, uh, "What do you think about uh, uh, Murray's uh, idea about uh, um, uh, competing uh, courts and police departments and so on?" And he said, "Ah, uh, uh, Rothbard, he's always." He's for everything that's against the government. Uh, and um, so um, uh, Mises never wanted to get into that uh, issue, it, although it came up one time at the uh, seminar. But um, uh, anyway, he wasn't really very open to the idea um, of, a, of a totally voluntary society. Um, okay, my college career, my first job was um, at Wabash College in Indiana. Uh, ben Rogge got me a, a position there as an instructor. And um, it was in Crawfordsville, Indiana. In those days, uh, for all I know, even today, a town of 12,000 people. Before I lived in Crawfordsville, the smallest city I'd ever lived in was Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was quite good. 
good. And it was my first teaching experience, so I learned a lot from that. Uh, but I still hadn't gotten uh, uh, through with my uh, Ph.D. Uh, so after a few years, uh, they let me go. And then I uh, 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 got down to it and, and finished it quite soon. But I um, got a job interview in uh, in the Buffalo at uh, Buffalo State College, or as they like to sometimes say, the State University of New York College at Buffalo, pretending that they're uh, the University of Buffalo across the first town. <laughs> I'm long retired, but that was uh, that was a, I, I taught there for a long time. Whatever, what was it? Twenty five, thirty years. It was uh, uh, a good time, and some of the students were okay, but um, uh, uh, not like the uh, Wabash kids, and not like the kids that I, I meet at the uh, seminars of the Mises Institute. Um, in the meantime. Uh, I, I did a lot of uh, uh, traveling, um, and uh, mostly uh, paid for, well, never paid for by me, uh, mostly paid for by uh, uh, foundations or by the people that uh, invited me all over the U.S., uh, in Canada uh, a few times also, uh, but mainly in uh, in Europe, uh, all over Europe. It was uh, one of the best uh, uh, parts of my life, really. Um, in um, um, I, I visited Poland, uh, uh, went uh, down to uh, uh, Krakow, Warsaw, Gdansk, as they call it now, um, and uh, Russia. Uh, that was uh, uh, funded by uh, uh, Cato Institute. I gave a talk in um, uh, Moscow, and then went to uh, Leningrad, and. Uh, and uh, met uh, uh, a couple of uh, Russian students. Their, uh, their the communist system, the educational system was terrible from the ideological point of view, but otherwise it was excellent. Their English was better than, uh, than the English of my students uh, back in Buffalo. <laughs> and um, uh, the two boys, uh, Yuri and Igor, and they were showing off a little. Um, one was uh, maintaining that Hemingway was greater than Faulkner. The other was saying Faulkner was greater. Um, I can imagine that uh, my, my students arguing about something like that. Um, so uh, in Russia, all over uh, Germany, uh, I went uh, uh, to Scandinavia. I see that the that Cafe Hyatt has an old talk of mine that I gave on the Industrial Revolution in Stockholm um, back in whatever, early uh uh, 2000, um, and um, uh, what I remember from Stockholm is uh, they they like herring a lot. They really like herring. <laughs> uh, and I had to, if you can believe this, I had to take a, a, a plane down to uh, Germany to uh, get a decent meal. Uh, uh, travel, I travel. I've traveled all over uh, Germany, Berlin. Uh, uh, a number of times, I traveled uh, uh, to Cologne. That was the in, at the invitation of uh, uh, a professor. I'd uh, somehow come across. I forget how. Um, professor uh, uh, Christian Vatrin, and uh, I addressed his seminar and uh, gave, in fact, a, a number of talks there. That was the uh, uh, genesis of uh, my book on German liberalism. Uh, that uh, 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 Peter Hilsman. Uh, then translated into German. Um, um, I think yes, it was a Cologne at, at some point that I met Guido, um, who, uh, as uh, I don't have to tell you, is uh, simply amazing. Um, he teaches at a French university now. He lectures in French. Uh, German is his native language. English is his third language, and um, it's absolutely flawless. Besides everything else, I mean, his a great skill as a uh, uh, analyst. Um, traveled, uh, let's see, tra as far as traveling goes, in Italy um, a lot, many times in the uh, in the north. Um, never got uh, any further south than Rome. Never visited my ancestral stamping grounds in uh, Calabria, Naples, Sicily. But um, 
uh, Italy was uh, wonderful. Um, it's um, um, well, much of it could be said, of course. Um, in Spain, also, I took some time. Uh, I had to. Uh, I was given I was giving a, a talk in Mallorca, uh, off the coast, uh, off the Mediterranean coast. Um, uh, so it was paid by some foundation or other. But I stopped off at uh, at uh, Barcelona to see the uh, uh, Gaudí buildings. It was the uh, great architect of uh, Barcelona. That was memorable. Um, actually, it was. Uh, this uh, uh, Vienna, uh, of course, uh, many times. Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't get uh, uh, to go along uh, on the uh, a trip that the Mises Institute, uh, uh, Institute took to Vienna. When was that? Well, there were two of them. One, uh, the one most recently last year. So we were uh, what uh, late nineteen nineties. Well, the f- the first one was in um, the late nineteen eighties. And the second one was what, 2011? I think 2011, yes. yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, but I uh, uh, visited uh, uh, Vienna. I visited Vienna a number of times, had some friends there. Um, as I said uh, somewhere or other, I just heard myself saying it, and I think maybe at uh, um, one of the Mises uh, Institute lectures. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this was the, uh, the Vienna of uh, Mises and and Hayek and uh, you know the great composers and so on. But um, by the time I visited, it was uh, very different. Um, the um, uh, socialists had come in and they threw out the aristocrats. Then the Nazis came in and they threw out the Jews. And what you see in Vienna now is what's left. Not uh, very much, um, but the uh, traveling. Um, I never uh, uh, went to the Far East; it was too far, and uh, Latin America uh, never interested me um, at all, really. Um, but um, uh, Europe, uh, uh, traveling in Europe was a great experience. I'm not able; I can hardly go down to the store nowadays. Uh, with my uh, rheumatism and so on. Uh, so I'm not going to be traveling to Europe uh, anymore, but uh, I remember it. And um, maybe I'll, I'll, I should say a few things about uh, um, my connection with the Mises Institute. Please, yes. Yes. Well, um, now, you have to uh, verify this. Lou, I am not on the Institute payroll, am I? <laughs> you are not. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> and your books are open to anybody who wants to check that, right? Yes. Okay, the Mises Institute is, uh, well, let me just put it this way. It's, it's Murray's dream come true. Uh, it's, uh, uh, um, I, can't, I can't say uh, too much about it and about Lou and about the staff and uh, about the uh, the. Uh, people who work there. Um, and um, uh, now uh, with, uh, I think Chad Parrish is in, in charge of uh, your uh, uh, technological um, outreach. He is. He's uh, doing, he's responsible for this session today, in fact. Is that right? Uh, well, he's, you know, done a fantastic job. I mean, this, uh, uh, you're, you have uh, audio and, and, and video um, Presentations that go out across the world, tens of thousands of people uh, seeing it all the time, um, and um, uh, you're supporting uh, uh, great scholars. I mean, um, uh, Hans is, uh, is just one of the people that you, uh, uh, Hans Hoppe, just one of the people you've nurtured. Joe Salerno, uh, Guido, um, and uh, uh, and uh, well, of course, David also. And uh, and so on. So it's Murray's dream come true, and um, um, it is uh, in, in a number of senses, in uh, in the sense that it is totally dedicated to the totally voluntary society. Nudge nudge. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and beyond and uh, uh, beyond that, dedicated to the non-aggression principle. Now. Uh, because of the person 
now at the, at the Mises Institute, and Murray would have been totally in sympathy with this. I think that there's um, uh, a strong inclination towards um, uh, uh, Christianity and uh, Christian morality. And um, uh, as long as there's the non-aggression principle, I have no problem uh, with that myself, personally. But Murray, I think, would have been very sympathetic to that. Um, any last questions? Tell us about your doctoral dissertation, speaking of Christianity. Oh, yeah. oh right, right. Okay. Yes, uh, this uh, um, question of the connection of, uh, of, uh, of uh, liberty and, uh, and Christianity uh, has been on my, was on my mind for a long time. And it came out in my doctoral dissertation. Um, it was on the Committee on Social Thought, and I studied the thought of uh, uh, three uh, liberal thinkers, uh, Benjamin Constant, uh, Alexis de Tocqueville, and Lord Acton. Um, and, um, um, well, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, Constant was uh, uh, a deist, but very sympathetic uh, to Christianity. Tocqueville was extremely sympathetic to Christianity, although... There's evidence that he was actually an agnostic. Uh, but Lord Acton, of course, was a great Catholic uh, uh, historian. So um, uh, that was uh, the uh, general theme of, of the dissertation and allowed me to, to uh, get into, their, uh, uh, in, into the thought of these men uh, to, to a, a very great extent. When I started out, um, maybe, uh, well, David will know this, there's a, a, a famous history of political thought by George Sabine. Oh, yes. Yes, right. it came out in Route 31. It was a, cla- it was a, a, a classic in its time. Uh, and Benjamin Constant was not even mentioned. Nobody mentioned Constant in the English-speaking world. Um, I mean, it's part of the parochialism of, uh, of Anglo-Saxons. Uh, so I was one of the first people, really, uh, to get into Constant uh, in a, to a large extent. Um, so that was... And uh, 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 Constant is still my favorite... Uh, 19th century uh, uh, liberal. Um, Hayek said that uh, Tocqueville and Acton were uh, his favorite 19th century liberals, but uh, uh, that, well, that's, um, that's Hayek, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, a mistake. Uh, but uh, Constar was, uh, was terrific all the way through. Ralph, uh, you mentioned uh, Bruce Goldberg. Uh, isn't it right that you converted Bruce Goldberg to libertarianism? Yeah. Um, well, I did. Actually, uh, I introduced him uh, to libertarian ideas. The one who converted him was Murray, because I, uh, uh, Bruce came down to the uh, Servo Basiat meetings at, at Murray's place, and uh, and they talked on and on, and, uh, and uh, uh, Bruce raised his questions, and Murray answered them. And it was uh, Bruce that, who then went on to Princeton the grad school, and I went down to Chicago, uh, and at Princeton. Um, uh, Bruce met uh, Bob Nozick, and Nozick, uh, I, have, I think I have a, a little piece on that uh, uh, that's in my archive at uh, uh, lewrockwell.com on um, uh, what happened with Bob Nozick. Uh, and uh, uh, Bruce and, and, uh, and Bob became great friends at uh, Princeton, and uh, uh, Bob read everything anybody uh, uh, suggested that he thought might be interesting, and so uh, Bob started reading uh, libertarian works and became a libertarian uh, for a while. Afterwards, I think he, he had some second thoughts. Uh, he was a, uh, basically a free enterprise uh, man uh, throughout his life, uh, throughout his uh, uh, unfortunately short life, um, but um, uh, he was a libertarian for a while. Um, uh, Bruce uh, also uh, uh, converted uh, temporarily some, another grad student at Princeton. That was George Will. <laughs> but um, George Will went on to uh, to uh, study at Oxford and was seduced by the whole Tory business and uh, wrote a book called Statecraft as Soulcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Bob 
Nozick was uh, uh, also obviously a very um, uh, interesting um, and uh, and I guess philosophically important and influential man. IHS was a, a great institution, and you were uh, you were you were long time associated with them. Um, what what led to the uh, you know your 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 disassociation from them? What was my? Why did you um? You know, uh, kind of move away from from the IHS. I didn't. I didn't really. Uh, uh, my connection at IHS was uh, uh, Leonard Leonard oh, Vigio, okay. um, who uh, sponsored my uh, uh, my giving talks um, and, um, around the, uh, different campuses and so on for a while. But now I think it's become quite a different uh, um, organization, as they all do. As they all they all become a neocon. Sooner or later, it seems. But um, uh, but that was uh, uh, useful and and, uh, and helpful and valuable uh, as it was going on. Um, and you know, really, uh, I don't want to say it, uh, but anything to get out of Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> One thing is this right in your you were influenced quite a bit by Paul Goodman could you tell us a bit about him Well yeah that was a mistake um uh, unfortunately um yeah, you know he, uh, I think he called himself a Tory anarchist anyway uh, his political views were uh, uh quite uh, uh attractive and I, I went through a, a phase where I believed in uh, liberation and um, in the Goodmanesque uh, uh, sense, but um, um, there was—I uh, forget uh, who sponsored it. It was uh, some other foundation where um, um, a bunch of speakers. Uh, Tom Sauce was there, um, Paul Goodman, some others, myself, and I got to know him a, a, a little better uh, personally. And um, I came to the conclusion that he was uh, kind of a phony. So um, uh, that was, as I say, uh, a mistake. One other question. A great many of your writings, you've done very important work in revisionist history. Uh, could you say something about how you oh, became yeah. acquainted I have with that? that connection with uh, Murray. You know, all the things that I owe to him. Uh, one of the main things I owe to him is uh, uh, my interest in uh, revisionism. That is, revising the government's line about uh, how we got into wars, how we conducted wars, the aftermath of wars, and so on. Uh, and Murray introduced me to that. He was a big revisionist in that sense. Um, and um, uh, the uh, uh, first book that uh, uh, Mises Institute uh, uh, published of mine, um, Great uh, Great Wars and Great Leaders and a Libertarian Rebuttal, it's basically a revisionist work, and uh, it's dedicated to Murray for that reason. And I have a little introduction there about uh, Murray and uh, revisionist uh, history. Um, you know, if um, if we didn't have revisionism, you know, we'd still believe that um, uh, the uh, uh, what that uh, the uh, uh, USS Maine was in Havana Harbor uh, on a goodwill tour. Uh, <laughs> Blown up by the vicious uh, Spaniards, <laughs> that uh, 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 Lincoln uh, uh, went to, uh, to war, to uh, 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 invaded the South uh, to free the slaves, uh, that uh, Woodrow Wilson uh, um, was uh, uh, loved peace, that Franklin Roosevelt spent every day and night toiling ceaselessly for peace. That's the sort of stuff we'd believe if we didn't have uh, revisionism. So uh, uh, I think uh, another, another uh, uh, reason uh, Murray would love the work of uh, the Mises Institute is because of their interest in revisionism. Uh, anything else come up? Could you talk a little bit about the relationship at Chicago between Friedman and Hayek and the rest of the economics department? Yeah, well, um, as I say, Hayek was always uh, punctilious uh, in, uh, in his politeness. Um, so they were uh, 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 they were very civil to each other. I don't think they had very much to do with each other socially. 
um, uh, because, uh, uh, as you know, uh, uh, Friedman and, and uh, Stigler didn't think that, Hay- that Hayek was a, a, a real economist. I don't, I don't know what they thought he was. Uh, a raconteur or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, of, co- of course, whenever, every year, whenever the Nobel Prizes are given out, the University of Chicago gets a full-time, full, full-page ad in the New York Times. This is all the Nobel laureates and all the different disciplines that are connected with Chicago, and they list Hayek also, uh, giving the impression that um, uh, Hayek uh, had something to do with the economics department, although he was uh, purely on the uh, committee on social support. So I don't think that they uh, that uh, uh, Hayek uh, had much uh, to do with uh, uh, anybody in the economics uh, department. There were, uh, Last time I saw Hayek was in Freiburg, um, where he, uh, uh, I, I think, still having money uh, problems or money issues, uh, went uh, to teach uh, after he retired from the Committee on Social Fraud. And um, um, I think I was with uh, Bruce Goldberg at the time. We were uh, uh, spending some time in Freiburg. And... Um, um, uh, it was interesting. Uh, uh, I don't remember too much of uh, uh, the, uh, the conversation. Uh, I had told some anecdotes. Uh, we chatted a bit. Uh, we had Pfannkuchen, um, which is a, a really great German pancake, um, which is the main thing that sticks in my mind. Um, but uh, uh, that's as uh, uh, that's as far as. Uh, Did you ever attend personally? Oh, let me say, let me okay. say um, uh, the Cato Institute. You know, I was vice president of the Cato Institute when they was, when it was set up in San Francisco. No, right. And um, uh, Murray was uh, their, their chief uh, um, a theoretician. Um, that was uh, uh, before uh, uh, they moved to Washington and wanted to get in with the uh, establishment. And uh, uh, Murray was finally uh, was kicked out. And... Uh, I uh, didn't have uh, anything uh, more to, to do with them. Um, but um, it's typical. They have a, a, a great uh, uh, modernistic uh, new uh, building in uh, in Washington and the uh, great lecture hall where the seats, I don't know, hundreds of people is uh, called the Hayek Hall. They would never name uh, anything after Mises. Mises was It doesn't uh, bother them that uh, Hayek and the Constitution of Liberty is, uh, um, uh, as Hans says, practically indistinguishable from a social democrat. <laughs> He's in favor of one, wel- one welfare uh, measure after the other, even uh, 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 government housing. Ralph, this was magnificent. Well, I hope uh, uh, that, it, uh, uh, that I sounded okay. That sounded great. That it worked out okay. And... Um, Thanks for the opportunity to make myself immortal. <laughs> Take care. Thank Thanks. you, Ralph. Bye, Bye Ralph. Ralph.